the benefit of the doubt even, you know? Because there's some kind of high-level presidential witchcraft that goes on. Because even with, as much as I'd been looking even into these celebrities, um, I I had real problems. It, it took me a while for me to accept um, stuff, you know, with like Hillary, um, with Obama. I knew it. I knew it. But it took me longer to kind of accept that, okay, it's actually not Texas Longhorns. Uh, that they keep throwing up. Um, Obama and Bush were not just giant Texas Longhorn fans. Um, <clears throat> you know, again, you see it and you, you want to ignore it, but you see Donald Trump throwing up the 666 hand constantly. After I opened my parents' eyes to this, you know, they both, uh, that's the first thing they said. Uh, to the just not presidents, but um, just that this is like a cult uh, of Hollywood. Then they came and said, like, I, ever since you've shown me these things, like, I, I can't stop seeing Donald Trump f throwing it up all the time when he's giving talks. And um, it, it is what it is. You know, you may think it's insignificant. You may think it means nothing. I personally... And I don't really, I don't know anybody much. I see people that do it inadvertently now and then, if I'm keeping it real with you. But I can say this much. I've certainly, I've never spoken throwing up the, the AO. It's actually an odd, awkward uh, kind of hand gesture that comes up only perhaps on a rare occasion, not as like a, a frequent part of your disposition it's 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 strange you know and knowing that i you know milo was such a big supporter of him and we 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 showed him in previous videos and how he throws up all the symbols and that this symbol is now associated the 666 is actually supposedly associated with the like the far right uh, or the alt right uh, when in fact, I, I don't think that's that's accurate. I think a lot of the people associated with the alt right um, actually are troll faces, trolls. Um, and also, let me let me speak a, just real quickly a little bit more on some thoughts that I've been having of late. <clears throat> do you know how? And then we'll continue. Uh, but do you know how recently I was saying that I. I I took a hashtag out of some of my videos, some of my past videos that I started to use that was uh, follow the white rabbit because as I've done more research, I've realized that actually that's that's very likely something triggering for somebody who has been through MK Ultra because actually the white rabbit is the programmer um, or, or the handler uh, for the mind control victim. And so when you say that, when you say follow the white rabbit, um, it, it basically is kind of reinforcing them following their programming. So it started to make me think about this whole QAnon thing, which is, is a very secular truth-telling uh, endeavor. Uh, and I've noticed there's a war even in the, in the so-called truther community where these two factions never seem to quite see eye to eye. And I feel like, honestly, I don't feel like there's much truth in the community that, that is not, actually, there's, it's not even a question, that they're not, if they're not pointing to what all this means, which is with urgency, telling people, you need to get to know Jesus Christ, you know. This is, all of this is biblical uh, prophecy becoming fulfilled right before your eyes, right? And when there's something absent that, then I start to think, why is the hashtag, one of the most well-known hashtags associated with um, QAnon, follow the white rabbit? Because it seems to me that might actually become a magnet then for people who have been victims of um, mind control troll and satanic ritual abuse, right? 
the point I'm trying to make here is that if, as uh, somebody like Russ Dizdar is correct in, in his writings about this black awakening, the, the rise of Satan's super soldiers in the end times, who are basically literally uh, victims of mind control, programmed to be as they are, then that might be a sort of a dangling lure for them to come and engage in pretending to expose truth while actually um, helping to further create a situation of chaos and not actually unearthing the real truth of the situation, right? Um, because I've just looked at it more and more and it's just like, man, when I, I don't, I really, I just don't pay attention to people who are very rarely, with the exception of actually Paul Romano over at Pockets of the Future. And I'm not talking about him all the time to try to give his channel. I just find for a non-Christian, he actually does excellent research um, in, in terms of the things that he finds. And I think that one day maybe Paul even will become a Christian. Um, but by and large... There's this, in the truth or community, there's this extremely secular um, strain and voice who basically are trying to point it. They, they want you to believe really only in the flesh and blood, you know. Uh, they, they don't really, they don't, like a bad journalist will do, they don't really fill you in on what it means. Like, in terms of, okay, there's these Satanists. Like, well, what does that mean? Like, there's this Marina Abramovic, and there's all this stuff. Well, does that then mean that Jesus Christ is real? And that these Satanists, are, or do you just, are you just believe in, like, this flesh and blood thing that's occurring here on earth? And if it's that, and not the, the w wickedness in the heavens that's spoken of in Scripture then, frankly, whether you think you're telling the truth or not, you're not telling the truth. You're as, as deceived as most, you know. Okay. So this is somebody named uh, Tilda Swinton. Not sure who is who that is. Don't you ever... Don't you ever say that... Uh, the Lord rebuke you, Martin. Thank you, Space Girl. They can be removed. Don't ever call Jesus Christ Horus again. You blasphemer. Get your little falcon hawk god out of here. Little G god. <clears throat> they always want to blaspheme, man. That's, that's a spirit right there, ladies and gentlemen. Some of you may not have gotten to see that because it got deleted in chat but that's a spirit there ain't not there ain't no reason i don't i never walk up to somebody on the street that starts to tell me that you know especially with the context of these videos that jesus is horus you know that's a spirit that's somebody with a spirit who can't stand it when satan's vices and ways are exposed and we're doing it in a major way here in the end this series is going to be about 30 hours long of just showing you a, a portion, a portion. This is just one man's research, and I could go, I could have gone even deeper with it. One guy's research, 30 hours long, showing you how many celebrities are a part of the club to try to help you to get to the place of recognizing that it's not an it's it's not an aberration here or an aberration there, it's it's systematic. You know, it's systemic. It's a cancer within the industry that has actually been infecting and spreading throughout the globe. Because life imitates art. There's this Tilda Swinton again. I don't know who they are. Um, 
I'm not that interested in this person in particular to go searching. But there you go again. Some of you out there may know who Tilda Swinton is. The Globe, whatever. It's a, it's a figure of speech. If you don't believe in those kinds of constructs or you believe, I don't care. It doesn't matter. All this stuff is a distraction. Flat Earth, Round Earth. Jesus Christ is real. I believe that I've been lied to about my history, uh, about many of the significant world events in my life. I don't know what to believe. And you don't know enough either, frankly. Unless you have some mind-blowing uh, evidence of anything, uh, you don't know either. And frankly, it is a, it is a distraction. Uh, it's a way to sort of divide brethren when actually the heart and meat of things, it's not a theological flat earth. And I'm not saying one way or the other or anything about it. I'm simply saying it is uh, theologically unimportant. Salvation, there is nothing uh, salvation-wise on the line with flat earth or round earth at all. And so it's really a moot point to me. You know, um, I have made a video in the past. You're welcome to, to go look at it where I raised many questions about it all. And I'm, I basically walk away and step away from that video saying I've been lied to a lot. Um, there's a lot of inconsistencies here, but I didn't, I didn't draw any absolutes in terms, absolute conclusions in terms of, well, is it flat? Is it round? I just... I, basically, it was the same thing eventually for me with the Mandela thing, the Mandela effect. Because even though I felt as though I had, I actually did experience some of the so-called secular uh, Mandela effects. Like, uh, you know, as I saw it being, number one, it disturbed me greatly when I realized Fiona Broom, who's a, a, a sort of a clairvoyant witch, um, that she's the one who kind of came up with and coined that term, uh, the Mandela effect. So that was number one. I, I started to think, because you know, it certainly is very confusing and kind of um, something's pretty off about it. But then when it started to come to people who kept attacking the Bible, and basically what I kept hearing from out of the mouth of these people who were trying to tell you that the Bible's changing and, and that Satan's changing the Bible, uh, they would often, their analysis would then be, this is why it's so important to realize that the word of, that the word is Jesus. And so all you need is a personal relationship with Jesus and you don't, you can't actually depend on scripture anymore. And the more I started to see that as the, the strain and seed, I, I knew just with everything that I am that they were snakes. Um, there to lead people away and to make people doubt God's word, uh, to make you feel as though you can't trust it, to make you feel as though what you are reading may even be coming from the enemy. It's a deception like none other, and it's one of the most wicked. And actually, I've seen the true colors of some of those people associated with all that, who basically promote uh, a lot of shills. Uh, in the so-called gang-stalking, targeted individual community, you know, um, who even once interviewed me and Simon and removed all of our content because, you know, uh, and which is fine with me. I actually didn't want an association anymore. Um, but who then removed all of our, our, our interviews that she had done with us. And um, it saying that we were, were bullies in the community. I don't call, you know, look in context at the couple of times where I did use the pulpit that I have here. And I'll even say this, and again, I'm not, we need to get through this here, but I'll even say this. The times where I have clapped back or however you want to frame it, like even though I, I actually do still feel as though they were justifiable, I don't think I'd do that again going forward because I had a moment where I was looking into Gino Jennings, pastor Gino Jennings, and I had liked the sermons and, and some of the, a lot of the things that I heard coming from his mouth. And then I went to his uh, YouTube channel 
And I saw that he and a past somebody, some minister down in the South were having this back and forth between one another from their pulpits, calling each other out in the pulpit on Sunday. And I start, I realized not only am I as a viewer witnessing this saying, I feel like this is an inappropriate use of, of the time and purpose of what you're here for. You're making this about you and having to defend you and, and all this stuff. But also... Um, it just, it starts to be a complete distraction from what we're there for. And so I don't think I'd do it again. In fact, I think I just, I'm going to learn to just allow, you know, people have their opinions, whatever, go for it. You know, in fact, I, th I think you actually do sometimes give them more fuel by dignifying it with a response, you know, and sometimes you yourself actually can go into negative areas and maybe even engage in some mockery that you really shouldn't be doing. Um, it can, it can actually, it's a crafty way sometimes how the devil gets at you, you know? So we're still on Tilda Swinton. I'm sure this is some kind of pose. Maybe, maybe this is some kind of Eastern star pose. I don't know if anybody knows what this is. Let us know in the comments, or let us know, um, uh, you know, uh, in the in the comments after or in the chat tonight, because uh, I'd be interested. This this one middle finger, because we know the you know Ashton Kutcher, the Masons, River Phoenix. We've seen them; they do the Masonic poses, where they put their hand into their vest, um, and so that that looks like a potentially could be a feminine version um, of it. I don't know. Uh, and clearly she's doing the one-eyed symbolism. The hidden finger, <laughs> David, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's probably, a, it's probably like a, a lightweight version of the hidden hand, but um, yikes. Tim Burton, I've always got, he's got, he's got some energy to him, man. Some kind of bad juju. Um, but he's doing some one-eyed for you. As you know, he certainly has liked to work with with um, Johnny Depp in a lot of his films. Uh, no, I have more than that of Tim Burton. What's going on here? This is where my archive is starting to... Oh, that's why. Because again, I have things in folders that are appropriate. So this is uh, Tim Burton doing the. They call this the um, the sign of Osiris. Um, and as a matter of fact, since since we brought that up, let me go here um, to my folder for that, and I'll show you other examples of this. You you've seen this repose before. This is how the mummies were laid to rest in Egypt. Um, and we'll we'll start, I guess, showing you first with the the man himself, uh, Alistair uh, Crowley, uh, doing it ceremonially. Uh, this is uh, the author Alice Walker. Uh, you may be familiar with her work. Uh, she's uh, I think she's a poet and sort of a an author. Um, there she is again for some reason in, in another. Uh, engagement doing doing that pose again and as you look into her too actually she's uh, you can tell like, she has some real sort of occult leanings and inclinations so it, it, it totally falls in line uh, Angus Young of ACDC um, sign of sign of Osiris there's not much you found you can find on it but I started to see so many celebrities in my research doing it all the time that I realized it's not something to just um, ignore. Uh, in fact, doesn't Dracula, in most of the Hollywood depictions of Dracula, sit in the coffin like that as well? I don't know what this is in there for. Um, this is Big Sean uh, doing the sign of Osiris. Now, this is, you know, you think, see, this is what Hollywood does to you, you know, uh, that it's a, it's maybe something associated with the Black Panther, or maybe you could go even further back and, and say Malcolm X or um, Black Power, 
something like that. Um, but you, you, it'd be healthier to know the, the actual origin of all of these things. And actually, we have him in the archive uh, throwing up the Illuminati symbolism. Chadwick, Chadwick Boswin, is that his name? Um, here is Boris Karloff. This is the best of all worlds. And I'll show you a couple of other photos here that will affirm for you without a doubt that it's a Freemasonic pose. Um, but he's wearing the Fez hat, which is a Freemason a dead giveaway. The Shriners all wear it. Um, it's interesting, a lot of Muslims wear them too. And This New World Order business is shaping up this whole order out of chaos thing. Sometimes it's really hard to know. Basically, you should just assume, um, frankly, that the hidden hand is behind um, most every fleshly, worldly event. Most every. God's got his hand in a lot of things, but ultimately God's just going to come in and regulate. Put a beat down once it's time. At this point, I, the way I see it is that God gives us free will, free reign to make the choices we want to make in life, to to reap what we sow here in life, and then if we don't get it, um, then it'll most certainly be dished to us uh, once it comes time for judgment to be served. So Bruce Willis, uh, Cannabis, um, Okay, Carl and don't don't forget Carl and Justin broke up, so don't worry about it. Uh, this is Christopher Lee, who we saw in the first video, uh, hanging out with Nicholas Shrek and Zena Levey and throwing up the devil horns as well. But he says he's not an he said in life anyway that he wasn't an occultist, um, even though all of his film roles as well were all occult horror macabre kind of roles that he took on. But here he is. Uh, Literally doing the uh, pose of Osiris in one of his films. Here's David Bowie uh, doing the same thing. Here's Emma Watson, um, who... Honestly, these things, they all seem so out of characteristic for like what we know about these people. Even the whole setup, right? And and again, I, I want to ask you here: Does this look like the uh, the normal Emma? The, does this look like the the Emma Watson you've been accustomed to seeing um, in in photograph or on TV or at the Late Show or whatever else? She not only looks out of form, but the, like the expression on her face, it it it, it, it it's strange. It just doesn't doesn't really look like her. Um, here's from an, some advertisement. Felice Fawn is her name, F-A-W-N. Um, well, there's a couple things to look at here. Uh, you, you have the, for one, she's not even wearing this cross correctly, so. You got the pyramid that they wanted to superimpose here. This is an advertisement for some kind of clothing. Um, she has some kind of weird quote here. It always was i think and sometimes i've seen these people too like they'll 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 um they'll tattoo like a, a saying from alice in wonderland on them or something as well um it's, it seems like the tattoos are some kind of there's more to it than just i want a little bit of artwork on me it's almost as though it's it helps to reinforce it's just my own perspective but if i were um, I'm concerned, let's put it that way, with this MK Ultra mind control business that um, they're used as triggers uh, for the individual. Uh, so, but you see that, that she's wearing a pentagram uh, watch, and then you see over here these keys. And if you were watching the last couple of videos too, I've mentioned the keys uh, several times and how they are used... Um, as symbols actually in the programming process uh, and it's interesting too that you see these hearts in them too and we've seen a lot of queen of heart one-eyed symbolism we've seen a lot of just straight up heart symbolism um, if I had to wager a guess 
if there were programming associated here, like I'll bet it's Alice. It usually is. Um, got like a little trident here tattooed on her her finger. People should ask what is going on. Here you go. Um, this is the only good photo I was able to find, but here are uh, three kind of master masons, leaders of the lodge, um, doing the the pose of Osiris, or the sign of Osiris. It is a Masonic pose. And so when you see people throwing it up there, in fact, you may go back and reread history and recognize that Malcolm X may have been a PSYOP on you. PSYOP is a is sort of a misdirection term anyway. There may have been a hidden hand um, involved uh, with Malcolm. That's just conjecture on my part. Um, I haven't looked into it other than just simply kind of throwing it out there as something to think about, something to look at um, as we're as we're kind of going through all of this here. Um, Gene Simmons, not only throwing up the devil horns, but he's saying, I'm a Mason. I'm a brother. I'm in the brotherhood. Uh, many of them are, you know, uh, Jillian Anderson, who we showed more recently. It's always lust and everything else too. It's just all, all sex with them. Um, and you would think, oh, it's just an artsy way of doing the X, the X files, which actually starts to bring into question the X files themselves, you know. Uh, but there you go. Uh, boy, these people. This is Danzig, of course. This is doesn't really belong in this folder, but like, are these your groupies, dude? Like that's yeah, like some straight demoniacs. Okay, uh, Gucci Mane, Gucci Mane, lovely. I'm just I'm very envious. Oh, I would do anything for those, for the bling bling. Just anything. There also seems to be, um, we really need to start paying attention to this because it's just to the tattoos over time because people weren't, you can say it's a, it's some kind of societal or, or culturally acceptable phenomenon these days. Um, but it's just, a when you're dealing with like kind of really broken Damaged people, they just seem to their their skin becomes the canvas. Uh oh. Don't have enough memory. What's that? Oh, I see. <clears throat> I see. Well, I should have it. Okay. So James Hetfield uh, of Metallica. Uh, Osiris's pose. This is actually uh, a, a pagan witch. Uh, I think she's OTO. Her name's uh, Janet Farrar. She's doing the o Osiris pose. Uh, and we don't need many more examples of this. Is there any more? There's King Tut. There's King Tut. I'll show you that. Take note of that, right? King Tut. O.T.O. Witch. Janet Farrar. So if you thought, well, that looked a little different than the other. No, it's... I mean, you could call it the, the sign of King Tut if you wanted, but they're all put in the same repos. Uh, Lil Wayne, sign of Osiris. I can't tell if that's an anchor or not. I don't think it's an anchor. Look at this, too. Yeah, You know, Jesus calls him I am. Or not Jesus, but, um, I mean, essentially, but 
uh, Yahweh, I am. Uh, and they use that a lot too. I am music. So he's basically that's that's the the epitome of what Satanism is today. I don't know whether all these people believe, actually believe even like a deity or an actual entity, Satan. All I know is that they 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 want to be number one. That was Levian Satanism for sure, at least outwardly the way they presented it. Uh, Matt Damon. Um, you don't find Matt Damon throwing up a lot of the other poses, but when I saw this, I was like, "Yep." And and actually, he's probably to keep it real. If you do some of your research, you'll you'll find a lot of stuff that's been written about how he and Ben Affleck may have come out of the CIA. Now, that's not a mind blower because. Um, that's it's like guys that's industry wide right but for whatever reason they were highlighted in a specific way um and of course he also starred in the uh, in good shepherd where his character in that um they don't really the film doesn't allude to it much other than including about 5 or 10 minutes of footage of his initiation uh in that movie into the skull and bone society at yale and then um, basically working on behalf of the CIA for uh, throughout the rest of the, the film as a result of his initiation in, into the Skull and Bone Society. So, um, but that's definitely the sign of uh, Osiris. Um, he's definitely showing you a Masonic pose right there, and it's it's not something to just forget and say, "Oh, that's nothing." No, that's a that's a very intentional, specific pose he's doing. Uh, but let's get out of here because we'll we'll be in this part for a long time. <clears throat> I just wanted to while we had while I had you here to kind of go over that, even though I've touched on it a little bit in some of the other videos. Tim Hardaway. That doesn't look like Tim Hardaway, but maybe it is. Um, oh, Tim Hardaway Jr. Okay, that makes sense because I'm like Tim Hardaway, like he was playing back in the in the nineties when I was when I watched it. Uh, 666 over his eye. Ladies and gentlemen, I mean, again, a lot of you guys already know this stuff. Time Warner Cable. Uh, in this case, it would be the Eye of Ra. Uh, the way that it's looking at us. This would be the right eye. Uh, Timothy Leary. Who got everybody to do LSD? who most people, he, he's definitely a witch. I mean, he was definitely a Thelemite, which makes him a witch. Uh, probably if we really started to, you know, I challenge people in the community too. do your research, you know, help, help me in this endeavor. Like, and then you can come into my comments and share what you found for me to go look at more. But like, I, I'm sure he was officially affiliated with uh, Thelema. I'm sure he was part of one of the OTO lodges. Uh, I mean, he's talking about how he's the reincarnation of Aleister Crowley and uh, how he felt like he was carrying on his work. And, um, you know, he's doing these psychedelic drugs. Uh, you know, um, LSD didn't even exist when uh, Crowley was alive, but he would have definitely taken it. I mean, you can't even distinguish, frankly, the lifestyle of like, let's say, even though Terrence McKenna really didn't take all the drugs that he for years and years he wasn't this psycho knot that everybody thought he was um but outwardly anyway like their lives were kind of indistinguishable because you know you, you can burn crowley's religion down to sex magic and taking drugs and occasionally having to sacrifice things you know just once in a while just every now and then, somebody's going to be sacrificed. Something, some animal, some person, perhaps. <clears throat> and actually, uh, uh, Crowley was actually uh, said to be a British intelligence agent. He, as a matter of fact, I think that's pretty much established by now. Um, here's Tina Turner. That, no, that's not just a happenstance. 
Tina Turner is not uh, affiliated with the Norwegian black metal scene. Uh, she's just another in a long line of your popular culture icons who pays tribute to the master of her industry in order to remain even nominally relevant. She's again, this, this photo in, in no context would make any sense as a still photo. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. I'm not saying art has to make sense, right? But like, I mean, especially taking in line all that we've been looking at in this, like, there's just something odd. There's an odd quality to this. Like, Tina, could you hold your hand up over your eye and make a weird face? for me thank you uh tinashi t-i-n-a-s-h-e this is this is one that would yield a lot so let's go to tinashi's instagram because surely she has one. Oh, that's the first thing that comes up before her wikipedia even uh tinashi uh, is an American singer, songwriter, record producer, and actress. Wow, she's she was born in uh, Lexington, Kentucky. Guys, let's just point this out too. Uh, Tanashi moved to Los Angeles as a child to pursue a career in entertainment. Um, that kind of that's the the tail of the tape right there. Let me. I just want to see how old she was when she went out there. What does that say there? Um, how old was she? 2007. So when was she born? She was born in 1993. So 2007 would have made her, uh, what, 14? So she's about 14 when she, boy, you go out to Los Angeles trying to make it at 14, like that industry is going to eat you up. I mean, there you go, guys. I mean, it's, obviously, before we even find the Illuminati symbolism, like, like this right here, even what's what's being sold to you, like lust after me. And that, you know, you don't even need this, right? You don't even need that. You shouldn't need that to be trained as a Christian to know what's going on here. Because again, it's not a. How many times does it need to be reminded to everybody that, like Paul told us, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood? What is not computing there with people? You know, the translation there is that these people have spirits in them. If you are minus Christ, it's kind of like what we've been talking about. Um. You know, in terms of just basically, you can basically make the assessment that if they're in the limelight, that they're a part of this, a cult. Um, but if, if somebody's minus Christ, standing minus Christ, not really born again, maybe sometimes in their, in their Instagram video they'll mention Jesus because they were raised Christian or something. But if they're not really, like, indwelt by Christ, don't you think... These spirits that roam around where literally there are about 6,000 in one man. Um, which means if you're just starting to do the math there, that there's an unbelievable amount of these things. Um, these disembodied spirits all around us at all times. And if you're living a certain way, living a certain lifestyle, especially if you're, especially if you're dabbling in the occult, you're going to have these, you're going to have some spirits. It's just, we know about a minimum. If you deny Christ, either the Bible's telling you the truth or not. If you, if you deny Christ, I don't care if you're Hindu. I don't care if you're Buddhist. I don't care if you think you're the greatest person in the world. If you deny Christ, you have an antichrist spirit. You know, you have unclean spirits in you at, at a minimum one. 
right? Sadly, a lot of, a lot of Christians today they don't believe. Man, I I didn't go back up there. I'm just saying, it's like a a porn site. There you go. I mean, that's why I pointed this out the, before with the guy with the mask on. You know? Don't just ignore this stuff. There's there's so many different variations that they do on this whole vow of silence, keep your mouth shut stuff. You know? To just reinforce it for folks. I, uh, we're done here. We're not going to keep looking. I mean, there's just lust, 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 and we've already accomplished and established that. Um, there she is again, Tanashi. So again, she went out to L.A. She went out to Hollywood to make it when she was 14. Um, remember, remember TLC, the band. Did you ever uh, start? Did you wonder ever why, like, she was called Left Eye? Do you ever ask yourself that? Or why this was a big thing? <laughs> Guys, we're dealing with a generation of people that have lived a much different life from you and I. Hopefully, uh, from you and I. According to all my memories, my childhood, my upbringing, like I lived a really good and an above average life uh, where I was not subjected to abuse of any kind. Um, but not everybody's so lucky, you know, and in fact, uh, as we see more and more, most are not, uh, this is a uh, Todrick Hall, Todrick Hall. Remember how, um, I had been showing you guys Matty Ziegler, right? Matty Ziegler. Uh, let's see if I can show you a good photo. This is Matty. Um, and this was Matty in the SIA uh, video series. Anyway, this here, this, this version of Matty, uh, dressed up as Alice in Wonderland, right? And here too. Well, a lot of it comes from this video that she did with this man, um, Todra Call, who you'll see here dressed as the Mad Hatter in a little bit. Um, and it comes from that. And it's Maddie, and she's in his in his Alice in Wonderland themed video. Um, so he, they, uh, you know, I, I feel I, I believe it appears that both of them, um, well. Why is it in there too? I see it because these are all in different folders. <clears throat> so there's Todd Recall. Uh, I don't even believe that's from the actual video. I, there, he's, he has an ongoing Alice in Wonderland um, thing going on. Uh, there you go. You see him. With the Mickey Mouse ears. Here he is again with the Mickey Mouse ears. And do not forget the Dorito. And frankly, I'm sorry to get... You know how we keep always talking about how deep all of this stuff goes all the time? And, you know, people will accuse you of, of reading too far into things or seeing things, but it, it does beg the question, you know, was the the shape of the Dorito uh, chosen with something in mind? You know, because we see how they they do it literally constantly. Um, they they make their choices intentionally, and uh, something to something to think about. We know that pretty much your companies are run by this hidden hand. Uh, this is footballer Tom Brady. Um, there's Tom Cruise. I'm a little disappointed in my archive at the moment because there's I got more Tom Brady, but um, well, I don't know why they're not showing up sequentially. Huh. 
it's not there either. Huh? I'm I'm not. I've got a couple of him throwing devil horns up though somewhere too. Tom Cruise and uh, what's this guy Russell uh, Russell Brand? Is that his name? Guy who almost or who did marry Katy Perry. Um. And again, where does Tom come from? Church of Scientology. What does Fritz, Spr Fritz Springmeier say about Church of Scientology and the Process Church? That both are front agents for the Illuminati that are engaged in total mind control. Um, I don't know who this is with Tom Cruise. Maybe somebody in the room does. Doesn't really matter, but there he is again. You know? just kind of exposes the meaninglessness of Scientology, whatever it is, you know, and let's not mention the fact that L Ron Hubbard and, uh, Jack Parsons did a, a satanic ritual out in the desert called the Babylon working in which they, um, and it took several months long for them to do this. But Jack Parsons, of course, was a member of the OTO, uh, giant follower of Alistair uh, Crowley. And frankly, so was L. Ron Hubbard. He, he did it more on the down low, but he was most definitely a student of uh, Crowley. Here's Tom again, too. You guys, you know. Kubrick wasn't... They didn't show you anything that they didn't want to show you. He would never have been, Hollywood's such an incestuous, um, loose, you know, um, kind of place that Kubrick wouldn't have gotten done with day one if they didn't want him to, of shooting what he did. Um, you know, again, I, it just goes back to this whole, for, from my perspective anyway, I think that they're so full of hubris. And I think that they're they're so used to just hiding in plain sight that they're getting more and more narcissistic and and haphazardly stupid with it. Um, and it's going to be their their downfall. It's going to be their undoing. Even though again, prophecy is going to be fulfilled, and there will be a time uh, in which it will appear as though things are in control of Satan. Um, uh, but, you know, for the, it also at the same time will uh, be following a time of great uh, truth revealing and where people actually see the, the, um, the true colors. of what's been going on around them. This is Tom Ellis, uh, who played Lucifer in the sitcom Lucifer in the miniseries. Lucifer, who which whitewashes and paints Lucifer as this good guy. So there he is again. You know, I guess he just likes rock and roll. That's all. Don't worry about it. He likes to wear fallen angel wings and, and this, but don't worry, because it's just part of his show promo, and he's really not a Satanist at all. Don't you go thinking that out there, ladies and gentlemen. He is not one at all. Somebody asked him the thing, what about all the good Tom Cruise does? They're filthy as rags. What about all the good that I do, you know? What about, ain't nothing I've done that's, you know? What about all the the sex and lust he's promoted to me on the silver screen? You know? What about all the rated R violent movies he's helped promote? And in, in, in brainwash young children into following? You know? I'd say actually he needs to repent just as we all do. But he needs to repent. And this idea that this person or that person, you're, you're not ever, no, nobody. When it comes to Jesus Christ anyway, you ain't gonna, 
You're not justified by your works. They don't mean nothing. That's just the evidence of God working in your life or not. You know? But if you're minus Christ, and he is, he's not standing in truth. Uh, I don't even buy. I know, let's put it this way. You know, when you t people want to come and they want to defend their own personal stars or the people that they feel an affinity to when we do something like this. That's why, hope, th thankfully, we're doing such a big expose that like they can't say it was personal. Uh, that I had an axe to grind with one specific celebrity. So it becomes a little bit harder for them too, to, to kind of make sense of this and rectify it. Um, but again, I just go back to what we were talking about earlier. Like, you don't know Tom Cruise. I don't know Tom Cruise. I don't know you. You don't know me, you know. Um, but I know that this much, if in every supermarket across America um, – and in Japan and wherever else, like my autobiography, which made me look really good and, you know, had a nice shiny cover on it and talked about all the good things that I've been engaged in. Like you and many other people who never met me, who don't know me, would think I'm the greatest philanthropist, whether true or not, of all time. You know? So, there's that. And again, I just want to remind you, too, you say that. We're, we're looking here at what we just saw with Tom Cruise. Here's Tom's daughter. If you want to, it, it, it inclines me to believe the further I look into it myself, I'm like, Fritz Springmeier was absolutely correct. Is is out there and wacky as some of the research that he did is like he's actually correct. Like this girl was raised in Church of Scientology, and here she is putting up Illuminati pyramids with eyeballs in them, uh, inking them on her person, and then here she is just walking around with the giant eyeball T-shirts. And it's that's we it's just weird. There's nothing stylistically. Nobody wears that. Nobody wears that. And I believe that it's a trigger to say, like, we're, we're all, I'm always watching you. That's why I think Stephen King, if I may, is wearing this. We never sleep. It's like a threat to those who've been through some stuff. Just constant reinforcement. That's just me. You can disagree, but that's my, that's my response. That's my reply. I'd say that, that Tom Cruise and anybody who doesn't yet know Jesus Christ needs to repent of their sins, be baptized, and be born again. Otherwise, I don't buy any of their PR stories. You know, Because even as a Christian, you know, you're filthy as rags. Tom Felton. Uh, Tom Felton of Harry Potter, of course. Uh, doing the one eye symbol for you with some monarch butterfly reinforcement for the monarch programming. Uh, actor Tom Ford. He just, again, we're on ID Magazine, so they, that's all they do on ID Magazine is you have to come and do, you know the, di the, the deal. You got to come and do the Illuminati stuff. Uh, Tom Ford, uh, again, this is on uh, for Interview Magazine. So there he is again. Uh, Tom Hanks, of course. And I'm well aware of uh, the, the different things that people are saying about Tom Hanks. I'm not going to mention them here in this video. I don't, I've not been, um, it's not that I've not been persuaded. It's just um, there needs to be a lot more uh, substantive evidence. Let's put it that way. Uh, Tom Huddlestone. Uh, he played Loki in the movies. And, um, I mean, you, you can say they're I love yous, but they're not I love yous. You know, there he is again. He's throwing up devil horns, winking at you, winking at you, just in case you think maybe it is just part of his character. You know? No, he's just letting the other club... Number but it's so yawn-worthy, so boring. It's like, guy, like, 
everybody in Hollywood who you're communicating with already knows. Like, they already know. Like, he's in Hollywood. He's in movies. Like, he's a sellout, too. He's a sellout punk as well. You know? Like, I, you don't need to constantly signal it to him. But it must come with the the territory or something. You just have to throw these things up all the time. Uh, Tom Jones. So any of the older ladies in the room who swooned over Tom Jones at some point, I don't know how, um, but it's like Neil Diamond. Like, I don't, I don't understand. Um, it must be just a, like another era kind of thing. Um, but Tom Jones, uh, throwing up a little one eye for you on the cover of his album. This is uh, somebody named Tom Kiefer of the band Cinderella doing the Ageless 666. And while we're at it, he's wearing the Masonic top hat. Because, again, remember who who brings you MTV even? Um, it's, I believe they moved buildings. Somebody earlier said that their headquarters... Oh, maybe the New York one is actually in the Masonic... The one I've been showing you was the building that they were housed in while in Canada, and it was a Masonic temple. You know, Tom Petty, Mad Hatter, and everything strategic too. It really just is. They got the three and the six that they want to show us. Six, 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 three times. You paying attention, ladies and gentlemen? This is Tom Petty's daughter. Tom Petty's daughter, uh, Anna Kim. I believe it's Victoria Petty. Um, she has a tattoo of Alice in Wonderland on her arm. And uh, in in an interview, she referred to that story as a kind of gatekeeper for her. Um, it was a very str a very strange way of framing it and, and talking about it. Um, but here she is, all these years later, um, seeming to live in a fantasy world of uh, of some sort, <clears throat> covering up her eyeball, tattooing her hand with an eyeball. Um, and you see her father having done it, you know, again, we get back to the generational theme again here. Here's Tom just covering up his face and just peering out with his eyeball a little bit at us. Um, and we're not done with that. We're not done with Tom Petty here. Even though you guys are familiar with these, these photos. So there's Tom in a magazine, uh, so Tom Petty signed. Read this, read between the lines of what's being said here. What's the, for the caption for this image? Petty signs of success, and he, he's showing you right there. It's 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 not all that hard to start seeing, in in the the duper's delight that they've been engaging in all this time. Um, and that's Tom with Anna Kim there. And you'll remember too, uh, you know, again, she's got this, she said she's always loved the, the story of Alice in Wonderland since she was a kid. Um, and you'll remember that in Tom, Tom Petty, a huge thing throughout his entire career, number one, he's a dress up like the Mad Hatter, but he also, um, in one of his videos, is it don't come around here no more? Um, the whole videos, Alice in Wonderland, and they're eating kind of like a Marina Abramovic almost cake, like eating Alice as a cake on a table. So bizarre. Okay, get out of here. Get out of Tom Petty land. There we go. Okay, so this is... um.
Yeah, it starts with first names. So usually, uh, yeah, it starts with first names. I don't got that much time to... My database is thorough enough, but I don't last name, first name, first. Uh, you know, sometimes my cataloging, it depends on what time it is, uh, <laughs> is not always the most efficient or uh, structured. Uh, Tom, Tommy Brady is this man's name. I believe he's a he's a model of some sorts. So, uh, Blue Soul Jim, you love Alice in Wonderland. Uh, you know, uh, I have found anyway that people who seem to have an obsession with Alice in Wonderland may want to, um, um, how to put it, what advice to give. To start looking deeper uh, into their past. How's that? Uh, somebody named Tommy Lee Sparta. Um, I've actually seen, they use all kinds of popular culture things. I've seen the mind control victims have an obsession with Batman as well. Um, I've also seen them have an obsession um, and it, it, I haven't seen a whole lot of other people step forward in the community. I made this video about it in my personal encounter with some of them. Uh, Doctor Who uh, seemed very much to be uh, very important to them. And uh, I, I believe strongly that they must be using Doctor Who in uh, current kind of mind control it, it, at a minimum, uh, whatever is going on is that Doctor Who, the series, the, the rekindled series, is including in it uh, <clears throat> MKUltra triggers uh, for people that have been programmed uh, at a minimum. So uh, this is Tommy Lee Sparta. Um this is Tommy Lee Sparta again. I don't think they have clues. I think the people that think that these things are, are deep and they tune into them all the time. I, I, somebody told me that recently. They were like, um, I had a friend that watched Doctor Who and they, man, they were sure of it. And like, it would fill me in on all kinds of things. And I watched it and I hated it. And they just kind of, the friend sort of felt as though, um, you know, it was it was kind of above them or too intelligent. I don't think that's what it is. I, I actually think that something is is uh, because the people that I knew that were into Doctor Who that were also um well the the girl I dated she was obsessed obsessed with Doctor Who, and then in Buddhism uh, one of those Buddhist priests. Uh, who I got on the bad side of, who had come from Temple of Set and also had, before coming to Buddhism, found his own Gnostic church. Um, he was, he and, I can't say, I'm sorry, I can't say what he found, a very well-known um, occultist, uh, technology web guy, uh, and that's not divulging anything. So, but just someone who, uh, the occult world would very much know who they are, uh, who was a student of theirs. Um, they actually both were obsessed with Dr. Who as well. And, uh, it was just, it was bizarre because I, what I know about what I know, if anything, about mind control program, the reason why the reason why they use Wizard of Oz, Alice in Wonderland, perhaps something like Doctor Who is because these are these are extreme fantasy lands, you know, uh, and and that's what they're doing is that they dissociate these people and then they walk them through like a fantasy world where they create their own kinds of triggers 
using that uh, kind of popular culture uh, oftentimes. It doesn't have to be, but oftentimes it's done that way because then they can, uh, as disturbing as it is, folks, they can massively trigger. Um, dude, we're getting kind of out there with this stuff here, but we might as well talk about it. Uh, kind of shotgun blast the audience uh, so that, it, uh, you know, something goes out. But also, and this is according to Springmeyer and his research, and I'm, I'm, I'm literally leaning towards that because of what we're, because what I'm seeing in all of this. Um, is that he claims that like there'll be sometimes a lyric in the latest song, right? From a certain musician uh, that, that may only be for literally one person, you know, one programmed multiple with some kind of unique uh, mission let's put it that way, uh, to carry out. Uh, and they can do that by, by radio. Uh, they can do that by um, television, right? And I've also even heard, if you read even further into Fritz's, that a lot of them have, because, I mean, if, if let's say the government has, has created this slave, or government's not even really exactly the right word, like these these um, these eyes wide shut style Luciferians create a slave, and they have a lot of power and influence in the world as well. Um, apparently, a lot of these slaves have kind of unique computers. Um, some kind of I can't remember the name of it. Uh, Springmeyer talks about it in one of his books it's hard for me to remember which book i read it in at different times of his uh but that that can trigger them with something at any moment okay and so we're 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 really we're dealing in uh, it's it's really scary out there stuff you know um uh, but i believe more and more as we see this like that's what we're seeing here you know that's this explains more than anything um the massive industry wide displaying of occult symbolism and imagery ad nauseum because uh, it may may have less to do even with pledge of allegiance and more to do with expression of symptoms uh this was uh tomo Milicevic, Milicevic, M I L I C E V I C. Tom Hook Hook Hugels, uh, Tony Braxton. You know, but again, I want to remind everybody as well. So, because I see people saying, when I, when I went through, this is going to be a long video, apparently, um, but when I went through my gang stalking, right, um, I had some weird, I had actually a lot of weird online activity as well, which a lot of people actually are expressing now, too. Uh, somebody mentioned it in chat and elsewhere. I had a lot of that stuff happening, not not barring just the the bizarre influx of messages I started to receive uh, from longtime friends, perfect strangers, uh, the weird Satanists that started liking all my old Facebook group posts um, from years ago, you know, all in succession. Um, two just strange things, man, just uh, like, for instance, in, uh, my mother could verify it, you know, I... This was very early on. I was showing my mother a video of another person in the community who claimed to be a targeted individual. 
about how the number 33 was significant to them as well, that it was significant in their gang stalking as well. And we started to watch this video on Roku, on the Roku. And I'm telling her it's literally coming up right now. And literally the moment that he was about to say it, there was an error on my Roku and it stopped working. I was able to go I was able to get it to work again and show her it but that was bizarre like at the exact moment uh, that it was that I was about to show this to her weird things like that were happening this is just what I want to remind you and it may have a that look there's when you're dealing with powers that are supernatural when you're dealing with people who are only doing what they're doing because they're sold out to the devil um, well, that's good news for you, actually. Um, that's actually, that's, that's a much better news for you than if actually there were no God, there were no devil, uh, and that it was actually literally just men and women that wanted to harm you. Um, because you take away the demonic and supernatural component to this, uh, and, there is no agenda. There is no targeting you as a person. Okay. Um, as a matter of fact, to go deeper with it, 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 it's literally all a demonically perpetuated set of circumstances. Let's put it that way. Um, and so don't let them punk you, okay? What what I mean by that is when you're going through this gangsta, when I, and when we're talking about they too, these demons, these spirits in people that are punking you, essentially to do everything they can to make you pretty much believe that, no, this is flesh and blood. Like, these are people like I went to, uh, that I work with. These are loved ones that are doing this to me, all this. And you actually start to think, no matter what you... You know, how, no matter how much you know that it's spiritual, like you have those moments where you start to say like, no, like they're planning this and they're doing this to me and it's, it's, it's because it's just too unreal uh, at times. Keep seeing through that, okay? That's what I would advise anybody who's going through this to continue to just kind of pierce through that illusion because it is an illusion. Um, again, when we're dealing with sorcery and magic and the capabilities of the enemy and the demonic um <clears throat> there's parameters around it but they can do a lot and I'll tell you what if they can if they can in the flesh talk to you through another person and speak into you about things about your life that you've done Maybe things you were not proud of. Uh, they have knowledge about things. A perfect stranger. They have no business knowing about it. you. If they can do that in a concerted fashion, uh, messing with your online devices is child's play. Okay? It's not a big deal. Um, keep that in mind as you go forward. Even appearing as though, uh, uh, keeping it real with you, you might even, I'm not saying one way or the other, but you may even receive messages from people uh, through social medias that actually were not that person, if you catch what I'm saying, you know. I realize that the things that I'm sharing with people here you know, anybody who's not been through something like this, they probably think this is pretty out there, whatever it is I am talking about. To non-believers, they'll really think, they'll just think you're insane. Uh, maybe you you deserve pills, but I don't because here's my, here's the news flash. As much as the weird stuff that I went through, like, I'm not going through any of that anymore. None of that's happening today, you know, um, at all. And my upload, I'm just keeping it real with you, like my uploads go through fine, my internet works great, you know, I'm not, uh, sure, do I have some spiritual warfare in my life? You bet I do still. But when it comes to that stuff, you know, you basically just have to keep seeing through it. 
and don't let it consume you. You know, trust in God, lean on God. The key component here, though, ladies and gentlemen, is trust in God. Trust that no matter what, because he's testing your faith. It's not cruel. It's not to harm you. He's testing to see how down for the cause are you. You know, do you believe that, like, no matter what's going on, like, God's going to handle God's got it. God's going to handle this. You know, he's refining you. He's helping to refine you. Uh, so keep, keep just keep that in mind. You know, I went off on a tangent there, but I know that a lot of people that come to this channel still, even though there's a lot more people now lately, a lot of the core committed base is still here because of gang stalking, which is frankly why I'm here, you know, uh, and that's why this entire channel started, you know, so this is uh, Tony Curtis, Jeff Chandler, and Sammy Davis Jr. They all just wanted to wear eye patches. Uh, and, of course, we know Sammy Davis Jr. was a high mage of the Church of Satan and a uh, personal friend of both Michael Aquino and uh, Anton LaVey. It, the whole industry is satanic, guys. There's no way around it. Here is uh, Tori Amos with a little trolley devil just kind of hanging out behind her. Well, that could be, that's nothing. Well, just in case you thought that, uh, here's Tony, uh, Tony, <laughs> Tori Amos again. Uh, this time an apple, so probably an allusion to the forbidden fruit. Um, but yeah, it's just a who's who. You know, so if you thought Tori Amos was deep and she's just a deep, deep feminist woman who, you know, well, you know, you were duped again, just so you know, you know, as much as you want to, as, as much as you want to be angry at people who say that the feminist movement was actually an, uh, a concerted effort to usurp God's mandates and outlines for how men and women relate to one another. Um, as much as you want to decry that and get angry about it, um, you know, essentially, uh, that's what it's been. Of course there have been things that women have had to fight for that, that should have been no-brainers. But it's gone to the point where Again, we're everything's getting turned upside down. It's like men are women now, and women are are men now. And the latest thing I've I've heard is that there's like these transgendered. <laughs> this is the the extent of the the what I think is mental illness or a spiritual malady, is that like there's this case of a woman who transitioned in, to be a man. And she's like literally claiming because she so has been brainwashed and identifies with how how uh, affirming society has been that she is a man that she's like talking about in articles that like men can have babies, you know. And it's just you know <laughs> that kid. No, the in this case that man can have a baby because it's like still biologically a man uh, a woman you're still biologically a woman that's why you're able to have a baby <laughs> like it's not men can't have babies you know but we're just getting to the point where if i say that it, you know we're, we're gonna be there soon where that's like hateful of me you know a hate speech to to suggest that you can't have a no men can't have babies how dare you, you are invalidating my, everything gets tested in Canada first, so they'll be the first ones. Uh, Tracy Lords, I'm not sure who that is, uh, but there you go, we need to get out of T's, we need, we need to make it to Z, thankfully U, V, W, X, Y, Z, there's not a, a ton of them, so Tracy Morgan, SNL.
I can't remember his name, uh, but he's the guy from Train Spotting. What's his name? That guy right there. If anybody wants to put it in chat, let me know. But yeah, official promos for Train Spotting. This was used in a lot of their promos. Uh, Travi McCoy. Here he is again. Travi McCoy. I don't know who he is. I'm assuming he's a musician. Uh, there he is again. It's so old, you know, I'm just, but I'm, I'm trying to barrel through this so that we're kind of just done with this series and that way I can get maybe back to work on the, this documentary I'm trying to get out about, um, Dave McAllen and his work and kind of show you how that whole Laurel Canyon thing went down. Uh, Travis Scott little one eye for you Travis Scott again just wants to peer out at you through there there it is again why are they all like what ha what happened this is what I keep asking it's like what on earth happened in the last 50 60 years to where it, what would have been unprecedented through the centuries all of a sudden is just like exploding through everyone. And why are they all jokingly tongue in cheek wearing 666 jackets? And like, it's, you, you got to come out of denial at some point. You got to start realizing, I mean, look at his shirt. It's got like a skull with devil horns with snakes coming out of it. You know, nine inch nails. Let me go over here and see if I can find this. Nine inch nails. Like they're, they're doing stuff backwards here. Let me see if I got the. Um, we do have one more phone call, so why don't we take that, too? Hello? Hi. Hi. Hi, this is Wendy from... Just note her... This is MTV, by the way. Just take a look, take a note of what the interviewer right here is wearing, you know? But that's not why we're watching this. Rita? Hi, Wendy. What's your question? Um, I was wondering if there's any significance in um, the backwards N and Nine Inch Nails. The backwards N. Uh -huh. Is it a logo thing, or did you decide that there was a portion of your no, life that was backward and we, we do teams? worship the devil, but... It, no, no. <laughs> yeah, I remember having that conversation. Yeah, do you remember... Does that remind you at all of um, something we watched earlier here? Does that remind you of all I of... I your hand over your eyes. Because <laughs> I'm a devil worshiper. What are you talking about? <laughs> all right, well, I have tickets to see the... That's how, it's all, that's how they handle it each time. But they're, it's like they actually are telling you the truth, but they're just... They're, they're, they're giving it to you in a way where you just... It, they, they make it sound like a joke. Trippy Red, and this was his girlfriend at the time. What is going on? What is happening? The devil is what's happening. Like, he's got the the infinity loop here. You know, it's just like these people pray for them, but... Like our world is, as these generations go forward, like they're just turning into like these weird zombies who happen to like write all over themselves. Like it's as though the skin of these people are like the walls of Thelema Abbey, you know, with all the blood and the excrement. Like you, you have to write all over yourself. Um, it, it's very weird. This isn't, it, I don't care how much we've gotten used to it, it's, it's not 
normal, it's not healthy, it's not good. People in Asia had it right. Like, you know what? You know, um, I believe it's in Thailand, in Japan as well, too. There's still a bias about it. Like, if you if you see people that have a lot of tattoos, like, you, you assume that they're a criminal, you know? Because it's always been associated with, like, gang life and, and just questionable. And you go back further than that, it's, it's actually pagan. It's always been associated with pagan life, which is why it's creepy and weird as well. But you just know, see, for them, I don't know what they think, but, like, to anybody who's got an... You don't even have to be Christian to see, like... There's something dark there about these folks. You know, this is uh, somebody named Trish Cruz, C R U Z. I don't know who she is, but perhaps some of you do. There you go again. I mean, he makes the feature again. That's just one. I mean, we could, I could have a folder of literally a thousand or more photos of him at different times doing that. And that's the other thing. QAnon keeps trying. That's the other reason why I don't trust it. QAnon. That tells you a lot, too. It's anonymous. But Q keeps trying to, to, to paint it as though Trump is almost like Jesus Christ himself. And I don't know about you, but I haven't seen a thing. Uh, I just I really haven't. I've not seen anything business as usual. Like it, it keeps going on. I haven't seen any of these so-called giant changes happening that everybody keeps claiming in that community that it's just right around the corner it's going to happen tomorrow it's next week next month Tupac I mean hey that's all good Tupac saw some things too he had some understanding of it but he didn't come out of it he didn't come out of it. He died. The night he died, he's like rolling around with like the thug of all thugs, Suge Knight. You know, he didn't come out of it. That's why a lot of these people don't make it until unless you make the clean cut and like just straight up. Like surrender your life to Christ, like the devil's going to have you for dinner. I found this interesting. Remember that? Remember that TV show series V? It's kind of like, um, kind of like they live in a way. They tell us little things here and there, but see, they want to. For a long time, there's been an agenda that wants us to believe that it's like science fiction stuff. That it's um. Uh, spacemen, right? When actually, it, it's a little actually more disturbing as to what these things are. Twiggy, that's Twiggy. I think you guys all know who that was. There she is again. I, I you know, if you're if you're noticing, maybe you notice why I would have saved that. It's because she's got the. Um, the purposeless, um, out of place butterfly um, programming being thrown up, and again, they, they what do you expect? Look, somebody came on today too. He's like, "What are you just showing random images of of uh, butterflies? Are you saying every time there's a butterfly on a cover or anything else that that's what it is?" Here's what I am saying. If you're going to hide things in plain sight, you're not going to make it stand out as something to really pay attention to. You're actually going to use, especially if it's for, um, you know, some kind of, um, if it's intended for sort of massive reinforcement of programming, um, you're going to use things that, that people see all the time, and you're going to try to get them to see it 
as often as possible, be it in nature, because you're going to see it in nature and, and with your pop icons on the magazine covers just as much as possible. So they're going to select things that actually they can inundate you with nonstop, uh, constantly. Sad but true. There's Tyler the Creator. Uh, he just Tyler the Creator is a, a odd future member, a rap artist. Just makes really, really odd out there, blatantly satanic music. Uh, there he is with the shirt, Satan six six six. Ha 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 ha. But then why are you all doing it? It's just a joke. Ha ha ha. And why in Revelation does it say that we'll know <laughs> of his arrival when we start seeing this all the time? Like it was, it was highlighted as a as something to take note of. Um, no, it's not a joke. It's not an industry wide joke. That's why Rihanna has to respond the way she does. That's why Trent Reznor responded the way he did when asked about his logo. Yeah. They were kind of honest, but they had to deliver it like a joke. Tyler, the creator, uh, wearing a, an inverted uh, pyramid, of course, but with Alistair Crowley t-shirt. This was, that, that's what he did. This is the pose he did on Larry King when he did an interview with Larry King. He just decided to throw up devil horns and stick out his tongue, dude. These people... <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. Like, I, 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 know it's, I know how ludicrous it sounds to people who don't understand this stuff. But I'm going to outright say it again. Like, these people are indwelt with spirits, man. And especially these Hollywood stars, it's, it's like these spirits are operating them. I mean, I, th I think that's video editing. Sometimes I just don't know anymore. I don't know anymore sometimes. The days we're in. Classy, too. You know? That's the context of that photo. He's holding up like a dead mouse. It's just... You know? Yeah, we know. We know, Tyler, and you're wearing your Thrasher sweatshirt, which puts pentagrams in their logos. And Yeah, Tyler, we know. We know you're an initiated witch. Congratulations. Thanks for telling us. Yeah, you sure did. You sure did. But see, you make it like a joke again. You know, I sold my soul to the devil for 30% off. Yeah. Well, you got a rotten deal. Note his uh, hat too. Golf. Golf Wang. With the inverted cross. I tell you, man. Oh, I, I think I saved this to get a, a snapshot of his followers. Album cover. Inverted cross on his forehead. Cockroaches. Came came out of his mouth in the video. Just a mocker. Does it remind you of... Remember when I showed you guys that video? Uh, the mocking spirit invading the church? You know? I've seen Satanists wear Not Today Satan t-shirts. They like that. They're just so... They, 
the the one man who in history walked on this planet and taught the most amount of truth who who taught and bore out love healed the sick freed people of spirits and so called smart people you know sharp thinking folks respond with this well it's it's spirits in them guys it's that antichrist spirit and a lot of them encourage it more and more and he encourages it he's a thelemite he's a straight up thelemite Tyra Banks I see th every time I see something new each time just in case you didn't catch it you know and it didn't get broadcast out Tyra that day on Good Morning Live or wherever the heck she is is showing all the good boys and girls out there the eyeball reinforcement. Is my channel making some sense out of things that you've been suspecting or wondering about for a long time? And two, like, sh this is a collaboration. Like, share with me, too, some of your insights. I want to see, especially in the comments, like, what do you think's going on in all this? You know, what do you think the main, because I'm not, you know, these are just my best assessments. You know, what, why do you think they, they constantly wear eyeball shirts and eyeball jackets and eyeball hats? And, uh, you know, Tyra Banks again. There she is again. And again, that's Tyra Banks still. Uma Thurman, whose father is Robert Thurman, a Varyana Tibetan Buddhist scholar, Tantra, Tantric. This is an advertisement for uh, Union Bank of the Philippines. I wouldn't want to bank there, but at the same time, it really doesn't matter where you bank these days. I'm not, I'm not trying to be fatalistic, guys. I'm just, you know, people say, well, does that mean I shouldn't eat here, shouldn't eat there? Uh, honestly, anywhere you go out to eat, I'm, I'm, again, it's not about being, I'm not trying to incite paranoia in people. But just a, a sober reality that, especially if you're eating fast food, um, you can basically just make the assumption, sure, um, that that's in the 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 head office, right? Um, I don't know who this is. Some of you may know. This is, uh, I guess, some basketball player that played for Duke. We're in the U's right now, so that's good. We're getting close. This, again, I, I don't know who this is.